Thing. Um, my name is Stephanie Baisley. I'm the team leader and programmer for Prehistoric Spatula. Our game is Dinosaur. Mm -hmm. It's an augmented reality game in which you take on the role of the kitchen assistant. You use the device to fly around the scene and fire food into the tables to fight and feed the dinosaurs. And you fire a tart, the black and white stripes stealing dinosaurs. And you just got a game to get the highest score possible. At the very end, it gets very difficult because it's all in chaos. But that's our game. Just okay. short, simple for the kids. Fantastic. Um, so. Uh iOS, Android? It's for iOS right now, but we use Unity for it, so we can port it to old, like, Android devices, tablets, mainly because it's so big. Right, okay. Um, and there's... I don't want to say there's a lot of games here that do augmented reality, but proportionately to the amount of augmented reality games that are on the marketplace, there's a lot of augmented reality yeah. here. So what is it about AR that you think is particularly exciting? Well, the thing is that like, all the kids that have come in to play, which is our target audience, have been like, whoa, because when they look at like, their, their friend will be playing it, and they'd also the dinosaurs will be on it, but they won't be on the table, because it brings the dinosaurs to life in your own living room. Sure. So it's just like a short week, like, nice thing for the children to look at while someone else is playing it. But it's also a nice, easy control scheme. You don't need a virtual thumbstick to aim. You yeah. just fly around the scene and fire. So it's really simple for the kids to pick up and play, and they just seem to have a good time if they're running on your table. Cool. Um, so... There's a lot of talk about trying to make games as frictionless as possible, like getting games into people's hands, you know, yeah. small downloads, blah, 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 that kind of thing. Um, I suppose one of the barriers to the entry marker. is the marker. Yeah, what we would do is we would provide a website where you go to download it, but we'd also provide like an activity pack where you'd have colouring in sheets for the kids to like colour in dinosaurs and like have like a clan bonus so you can unlock cool features in the game that you wouldn't be able to normally. So this isn't just an app, this is like almost a full service. Well, if they want the full service, they can have it, but like, because <laughs> um, obviously we're starting up a company, but we will put this Great. Yeah, okay. So have you found the festival so far? How's the reaction been? Overwhelming, it's been great. Yeah. Um, like, just seeing the kids queue up and wanting to play again is just been amazing. And yeah. the, even the adults are like, oh, you're going to be a high yeah. score, so it's been yeah. great. The big kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, free to play? Premium? Free to play. I, I, I don't see us developing more timeless because obviously we're going to be working on bigger projects in the company. But this would be a nice week game for the kids to pick up and play for the adults to like have activities for them to do. It's just a nice week game. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things that uh, one of the things that the mainstay of the games industry, like maybe the people who have been in it for a few years, yeah. there's a big pushback against freemium at the moment yeah. and people sort of saying, well, we can't make the game that we want to make. And yet you come here, there's a lot of young talent like coming up, like yourself, that are, that are just like, well, of course it's free to play. Do you think that's changing? Well, there was the whole thing in the newspapers about like the model where they download it for free but like they pay money for like the extra in-game gems and stuff and it's like because the card was attached to the device the parents are getting like thousand pound bills because the kids didn't understand that they were actually paying like, right, for sure. the in-game stuff so we didn't want to like pretend like that and for pro play because we've already been paid to do this game it's just been given us an opportunity to make a game what we wanted and how we designed it so it's not like not a big loss to us if we don't so it's more sort of um, what people are calling like giftware. It really is, yeah. I mean, it's just something that could also be good for like if you're looking for a contractor to work in the company, be like, we've made this sort of game, it'd be good. I mean, Sony's PS Vita as well is also big for the augmented reality, and it's not going to be able to game as well. That's the second time somebody's mentioned Vita. Uh, are I've you... worked with the Samsung tablet before, actually, and that seems to be really good for the augmented reality as well. The iPad is really good as well, so yeah. it's not like it's a stuck market, yeah, yeah. but it's just whatever it works on. Now you're working with a Samsung tablet because uh, you went through one of our, uh, one of Steel Media's fantastic <laughs> developer challenges. Yeah, we did indeed. So what was the game on that? And um, we used Eclipse for that. It was Little Bunny Foo Foo. Okay. Where it was like a terrain manipulation puzzle game. It was like a lemming sort of game. We used the S Pen. It was like more. It was designed around the S Pen for sure. the, the precision based thing. And you dig dirt and you remove dirt and you can like it's puzzles and physics. So like rocks will hold you to gravity and hold, and you just have to get the carrot from point A to point B, but when you hit off an edge you can go the opposite direction and so forth. So what was the big takeaway from, from working with Samsung hardware? Clips is lovely. But no the Samsung and the hardware is lovely itself. Like it was it was really fast, like we, it ran our game really efficiently. Like we had hundreds of sprites and terrain manipulation and all this stuff, but I really like the Samsung camera. So here's a big question for you. Um, the again another thing that's sort of being talked about at the moment is the walled garden of the App Store in comparison to Google Play Game Services, uh, sorry, Google Play App Store, and um, you know other other means of getting your games out there. Yeah. Um, 
as somebody who's kind of, uh, you know, forging a path in the industry at the moment, are you looking to sort of focus more on iOS, or do you, do you think this? Are we in a multi-platform world the now? I, the reason why we focus on the iPad was because it is very common in a common house system. Most parents let their kids play the iPad, so the kids know how to hold it and play with it. But in, as in terms of the store, the iPad store is insanely big. Like, if you were to release a game, it could just not even peak. You probably be, like they could type in dinosaurs, but there'll probably be hundreds of our dinosaur games. But I think in the Samsung App Store, it's quite nice, but it's. Um, I think, I think it's fine, something else or... It hasn't quite got the penetration in the market at the no, moment, it has it? No, it hasn't, not yet. I mean, because, like, I'm, I'm still a bit off of the something else on myself, but I'm getting there. Yeah. And the Google Play, I haven't really looked into that.